So a few months ago, I posted this project on our channel where we built this super awesome keyboard and mouse and we casted it in epoxy. And I personally feel that it didn't really get the recognition it deserves. And YouTube has proven that most of your new viewers and subscribers don't normally go back to your older videos. So, so in today's video, I just want to share this project again with you. And if you watched it already, I really apologize. I just want to thank you for the support if you are going to watch this video again. So that being said, we did reach out to Razer and they sponsored us this keyboard and mouse for this fun project to do. And I personally feel it's a really, really cool video. And if you're going to watch it, I hope you enjoy it and leave me a comment down below. What do you think of this super awesome keyboard and mouse we cast it in epoxy? Thank you very much for the support. Make sure you like and subscribe this video before you go. Thanks guys. See you next week. Cheers. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to DIY with Greg. In today's video, we're going to epoxy a Razer keyboard and mouse. Let's go. This is a very expensive Razer keyboard and one of the best gaming keyboards on the market. And this is a Razer mouse, one of the best gaming mouses on the market. While I was busy unboxing the keyboard and mouse, you can definitely feel that this product is of a high premium quality. I personally use a Razer mouse for all my gaming and editing and I honestly do have to say that I'm super satisfied with the quality and performance it's giving me. So the first step I took for this project is to build a mold where we're going to cast all our epoxy in. I am specifically building this to a specific size and I would strongly recommend watching this video until the end to see the final product. I'm using a standard white melamine board for my mold and now I'm just cutting all my pieces of wood to size. And I'm just using a normal nail gun to assemble my box together. You can use screws, but in my case, I just went with a nail gun. Now I'm just drilling a 20mm hole at the back of my mold for all the cables to go through. The silicone I'm adding on the inside edges of my mold is just to prevent the epoxy from leaking out. At this stage I'm not too worried to have a perfect silicone edge because I know I'm going to route all my edges in the following steps. Now I'm just adding some release agent wax. On the inside of my mold, this step is just to prevent the epoxy from sticking to the wood. At this stage I'm making 100% sure that I cover all the corners and the edges. The epoxy I'm using for this project is a local company from Joburg, South Africa, AMT Composite. And the mixing ratio for this epoxy is 1 to 6. That means 100% pot A resin and 60% hardener. Please don't use this mixing ratio wherever you are in the world. There's a thousand different epoxies on the market with different mixing ratios. Make sure you get the correct instructions from the company you're buying the epoxy from. Once I had my pot A and pot B ready, I had to mix everything together and stir it for at least 3 minutes. So the idea I've got for this epoxy project is to have the keyboard and mouse looks like it's floating in the middle of the epoxy mold. This means that I need to cast a 10mm layer first, wait for it to dry and then only can I continue to the next steps.
I'm using a flame gas gun to remove the last bits of bubbles in my epoxy. The next day. So I came back the next day when I knew the epoxy was 100% set. So I laid my keyboard and mouse in the center of the mold and pulled my cables through the hole I drilled at the beginning. Now I'm just applying some silicone in the back of my hole to make sure the epoxy is not going to leak out. The specific epoxy I'm using, I can only cast 10mm to 15mm at a time. So this is my second layer of epoxy casting. So this was one of the mistakes I made. The second layer of epoxy I casted made the keyboard and mouse move around. Luckily for me I was still at my shop to see that this was a problem and with my experience I fixed it quickly just by clamping the keyboard and mouse down so it stays in that position while the epoxy is drying. Six hours later. So I came back six hours later removed all the clamps and start with my third and final epoxy casting. I just want to thank the sponsors for making this video possible, Razer and X Technologies. They sponsored all the hardware for this project. X Technologies is a South African based company. They supply and sell computer and laptop components such as monitors, motherboards, CPUs, memory, expansion cards, power supplies, optical drives, hard drives, keyboards, mouse screens, laptops, every single hardware you can think about and much much more. XTech will have it all. They're not only supplying hardware but computer software as well. X Technologies is catering for the corporate industry and individuals. Nationwide delivery. I am going to leave a link down in the description where you can find all their details. So the calculations I made for the amount of poxy I'm going to need for my third and final pour was a little bit out and I had to mix a little bit extra so I can completely cover my keyboard and mouse with epoxy. Three days later. So coming back three days later when the epoxy is 100% set, I'm going to break and remove the wooden bolt I built for this epoxy casting. And as you can see the wood is not sticking to the epoxy, this is because the wax I was applying to my wood. And as I was busy breaking the wood off, it's the first time I can actually see what I have built. And at this stage, I am 100% satisfied thus far.
The edges of my epoxy is very sharp and square, thus why I'm just giving it a small chamfer with my router, right around on top and at the bottom of my epoxy mold. If it's your first time joining my channel and you enjoy DIY videos, or if you are here for a long time and you haven't subscribed yet, please support the channel by subscribing, liking this video and sharing it with your friends. It's honestly going to help the channel grow and help me to make future content. Moving on to the sanding part of this video, this is an extremely time consuming process, starting with 100 grit, moving on to 200 grit, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500 grit and honestly speaking this was a very time consuming process. But at the end you're going to sit with an amazing result. To have a high clear finish, you need to polish your epoxy as well. Starting off with a 2000 grit sponge sandpaper and then moving on to a 3000 grit sponge sandpaper. And this is where the magic is starting to happen. This is the part of the project where the epoxy is becoming as clear as glass. I guess you would be wondering by now, why in this world would I attempt a project like this? Epoxying a very expensive keyboard and mouse. Well, to be honest with you, I do play games from time to time and I've got a very nice gaming MSI screen. My gaming screen can move sideways, it can tilt, but it can't move up and down. This is why I'm building this project, just to lift my screen so it's about eye level. So this is the purpose for this whole project. So honestly speaking guys, I'm not even sure if this keyboard and mouse is going to go on because I'm pretty sure the epoxy went into all the little channels inside the keyboard. So I honestly hope this is going to work. Okay guys, this is going to be it. I'm going to leave you with some final shots for this project. I honestly hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe before you go. And I'll see you next week. Cheers, guys.